Can you hear me? Yes. Being born and raised in Louisiana, I observed as a five-year-old the women in the country, they used to wash their steps down with urine and perfume. And I said, uh, I said well, what y'all doing that for? Well, just in case if anybody threw some greenery down over the, the, over the night, so I would try to bring it in my house, I had to wash my dough steps down. So the uh, urine, uh, was used as, as to break any magical spells or any you know rituals that were done uh, outside of home, so he wouldn't bring it in the home. So all my life I heard stories just like the, uh, Professor White said, well, uh, if you ever go to New Orleans, you better watch yourself, don't eat that, don't eat that, and people could put snakes in your stomach, frogs, and uh, all kinds of type of things. So, you grew up hearing that all your life. And uh, what I was involved in before Buddha was uh, New Age metaphysics, which dealt with uh, like the science of mind, affirmations, uh, meta yoga, uh, breathing meditation. So I was sort of like a, a mystic. Uh, but in 19, uh, I guess 1977, uh, most of my life, I've been a professional karate teacher, uh, earning a seven-degree black belt from the Korean Taekwondo Association. Uh, my business was located at 1926 Canal Street. And on Canal Street, I had the most supernatural encounters because the building that I occupied was built on top of a cemetery. So uh, what happened uh, at night when we closed the business, we would hear footsteps walking across the floor. We couldn't see them, but they would open and close doors. So in other words, it was a very haunted building. And the spirits used to show me things about everybody that walked in the building, was into everybody's business, it was telling me what everybody was doing. And, uh, so I, I knew how to, defend myself in the martial arts, but I wanted to know how to defend myself spiritually. So that was my main motivation, uh, living in New Orleans. I knew New Orleans' past reputation. So uh, my first uh, encounter was an encounter with a, what is called a Palermo, which is the Congo-based Cuban religion called Palo Mayu. Uh, the gentleman was named Enrique Cortez, so I had a reading out of curiosity and with a uh, category, which I call it shell divination. And uh, so Mr. Cortez threw the shells down on the mat, and he had a little black rock and a white rock. So uh, toward the end of the divination, he looked up at me and he said, you're destined to be a popular voodoo priest in the United States in the future. And I looked at Mr. Corsair and I said, don't you jerking me around and pulling my leg. I ain't looking for no voodoo, I'm a Roman Catholic. And I'm satisfied being a karate teacher. <laughs> so he said, well, you gonna see what happens. And so I left there and said, man, this guy is tripping. So and as time went along, uh, I guess, so that happened in January uh, 1980. So by the spring 1980, I got an invitation to go to Brazil as part of an African Studies program.